Hey, how you guys doing? I want to speak about uh, th three pillars. I think that um, largely, I I'm sure there are more, but uh, in terms of, I think these three are the, the major ones and, and many others branch from these that make a man. When I say man, I mean man or woman. Um, and it's value system, worldview, and mindset. The value system, the things that the, the that are most important in life for them, their mindset, the way they think, and the worldview, the way they see the world, those three things are so big. The mindset, the way they think, the way they reason, the way they make decisions, why they make certain decisions, the worldview, the way they see the world, the way they define the happenings of the world, how the way they answer why certain things happen in the world, and then the value system, the way they rank what's most important in life. Those are the three pillars of a man. So when you look at Christ now, uh, when he comes, again, Christianity is not a religion. It's a kingdom. It's a realm. Meaning just like the world has its realm and its way, its functions, God was also through Christ revealing another kingdom, a realm. Meaning he's introducing a worldview, a mindset. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ and then a value system because he himself had a value system. He himself had a worldview. He himself had a mindset. Worldview. Jesus's worldview was this. I have a father and the father has sent me to fulfill a purpose and my life is to fulfill that purpose. That's the way he sees the world. He says, I have come to do the will of him that sent me. There are many things, but that's one of the main ways he saw the world. This world was a place to come fulfill purpose. It's a platform to come fulfill his purpose. So for a kingdom-minded believer, anything outside of that is inefficient in life if it's not aligned to that purpose. So then he also had a world, he had a mindset. The Bible says he has the mind of Christ. It says, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. He had a certain way he thought and saw life. Then he has his value system. The things that meant the most to him. God, the Father, number one, meant the most to him more than anything else. That's why he dedicated time to spend time with him. And then he also, the other things he valued, he valued growth. Growing in life. The Bible says he increased in stature with and in favor with God. He increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. So he valued growth in life. So when the kingdom comes, it comes to give you that same value system, that same mindset, that same worldview, that now the same way Jesus saw the world as a place to fulfill purpose, you see the world the same way now. The world is no longer a place to come and have fun, per se. It's not a place to come and just waste time. That's not how he saw the world. So then when he brings this kingdom and reveals this kingdom to you, you develop that same worldview. So now you're in life and you don't see this world as a place to have fun. And I'm not, I'm not against fun, but what was fun to Jesus? He said, for the, uh, uh, for the joy set ahead, he endured the cross. So, because one of the, also the things that define a man is virtue, but that falls under the pillars. Virtue also, like the, the man's character defines him as well. So he says, for the joy set ahead, he endured the cross. So because of his nature, which is love, his joy was not what immediately brings him happiness, but what brings his joy is to see me doing what I'm doing right now, which is talking about him, which is me being saved by him. That's what brings him joy. So the, there's a way the world understands joy and, and fun. There's a way that God, there's a way, there's a mindset and a way that Jesus thought about joy. His joy was to see many sons coming to glory, many people being saved, many people coming to know God. That's what brought him joy. And so when I look at that and I meditate on that, and I understand that I take on that worldview. So my life is no longer for me. My joy is not what immediately brings me joy. You see, in his value system, entertainment wasn't on the list. Not if, you, if you study the life of Christ, I don't see anywhere where you can see he truly valued entertained. He didn't value being entertained. He valued serving men. He valued loving God. He valued praying. He valued building his relationship. He valued growing spiritually. He valued people. He valued souls. I don't see entertainment in there, so it's not in my value system. I don't want to be entertained. You see, his mindset, he had a humble mindset. He had no problem hanging out with the sinners and tax collectors. So that now becomes my mindset. I think that you develop that same mindset. 
then he has a, a worldview, like I spoke before. He has a way he sees the world. He understands this world is temporary, this world is perishing. He says, while it is day, we will work. For the night comes where no man can work. That's how he sees the world. So this world, he sees it as daytime. While it is daytime, while man has breath, it's time to work and fulfill purpose. For the night cometh, the day cometh where no man can work anymore. So that gives you that seriousness. And this thing is so important, even for Christians, because I show you now why so many um, young people are disconnected from the things of the Spirit, because Christ was never introduced to them as bringing a kingdom. They understand the gospel of salvation, but they don't understand the kingdom. They, they see it as Christ is an addition to their life. But Christ was bringing a kingdom that was supposed to take over the life. Meaning, it's not uh, where you have your social life, then you have your work life, then you have your uh, your school life, and then you have your religion. It's like one piece of the puzzle. No, no, no. The kingdom comes to now construct every other aspect of your life. The kingdom makes your, what your social life looks like. The kingdom makes what your uh, work life looks like. He says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have become new. He says, Behold, all things are past and all things become new, and all things are of God. So everything's become everything, everything becomes new. The way you see the world becomes new. Everything after salvation should change. The things you watch, the things you read, the things you listen to, because everything has become new because you're a new creature in Christ. That spirit man has been reborn and reformed, and now it's the process of you being conformed into the image of Jesus Christ, who is the perfect man of the kingdom. That the end of every man in this kingdom is to look like Christ, that perfect man, to have his mindset, to have his worldview, to have his value system, to have his virtue, that he loved men, that he served men. That's the pattern. So the kingdom comes as a revelation. It's not a religion. It's not one aspect of my life. It defines my whole life. It's not just one piece of the puzzle. It is the puzzle. Everything else is a piece of the puzzle. But the kingdom itself is the entire puzzle of my life. It is the puzzle itself. So he's bringing a kingdom around the kingdom of God. God bless.